Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today, changing up gears a little bit. I've got a job coming up soon that I uh, really would like to use my horizontal boring mill on. And, uh, but before I do, I've got some things that need to be done to this machine to get it where we can really use it. Right now, I've got it in the shop. We've done some work to it since I brought it in, mostly cosmetic. Uh, we went in and did, you know, cleaned up the paint on it uh, and, I must say we, when I say we, I'm meaning actually Brock, my boy that helps me, did a lot of that actually a year or two ago. And uh, the machine's just kind of been sitting ever since. And the biggest issue that I've got to start out on this thing is the motor on it. Now, when I got this machine, a little bit of history here, when I got this machine, it came from a, a gentleman over in uh, Louisiana. He was using it in his shop. Uh, when we were talking back and forth about the machine, one of the questions I asked him, I said, what voltage are you running this on? I knew it had a three-phase motor, 10 horsepower. And he told me he was running it on 220 volts, which is what his shop was wired for. I said, great, that's perfect. I'm gonna bring it in my shop, that'll plug right in. I brought it in, we plugged it up, and hey, everything worked. But I quickly discovered there were a few issues with the motor. It was running kind of hot, it was running uh, kind of stiff. And um, upon investigation, I, I discovered that the bearings inside that motor, which were sleeve bearings, uh, basically just, there were no ball bearings in it. This is going back before the days of ball bearings. This machine was made in 1918. The motor on there was this big 10 horsepower GE motor uh, that had a 1916 patent date on it. I'm almost positive that it was original to the machine. And um, the interesting thing was, was when I cleaned that motor up and you could actually read the plate, I noticed that it was stamped both 440 volts and 220 volts, but at some point in time, someone had X'd out the 220 volts, which hmm, kind of made me wonder. I pulled the, the header off the end to kind of look at the wiring coming out. Only three wires coming out of the motor. Normally on a three-phase motor, you'll have nine wires coming out of the motor, and depending on how you connect those wires will determine whether you're gonna be running on uh, 220 volts or 440 volts. Um, and my assumption is, is that at some point in time, uh, a shop had that motor rewound. And as is very common, uh, when a motor shop rewinds a motor, they say, hey, what voltage are you gonna run this on? Hey, we're running on 440 volts. They just don't take the time to bring all nine leads out. They only bring out the three leads that they need to run everything. They do all the connections inside the motor. They rewind it, send it back to the shop, and everything is great. And that works wonderful until that machine goes to its next home and someone needs to change the voltage as in the way I did. So at the end of the day, uh, I actually made a very difficult decision that I'm not gonna use that original motor. Uh, I really wanted to, it looked really cool, uh, but there were multiple issues with it. The biggest being that the bearings were just totally shot on it. I took the bell housings off, I looked in there, and uh, the way that those bearings are, I'm not gonna say I couldn't have made them, but they were not something that was gonna be very easy to make at all. It was gonna be a lot of work to rebuild that motor and put new sleeve bearings in it. And then two, I was gonna have to take it to my motor shop and either have it rewound or maybe get the, the leads pulled out. When I started looking at the amount of time and money it was gonna to take to do all this, I made the decision pretty quickly that we're just gonna change the motor out. And that's what I'm gonna be working on today. And in the process of doing so, uh, there's a lot of differences between the motor that I had on there versus the motor I'm gonna be using. The size is much smaller. Uh, as you can imagine, those old motors were just gigantic and the more modern motors are a lot smaller. The RPMs are changing on the motor, so I had to do some math and figure out what size pulley. I was able to, to get a pulley size that's gonna get it really, really close to the the, the, the speed that's supposed to be working within within 50 RPMs, which will be just fine. Um, and But the base, the motor mount itself is on a different uh, configuration than the original motor. So we got to do some work over here to make a motor mount where we can get this thing mounted up. Okay, enough talking. Let's get over here and take a look at what we've got to work with, look at what we got to do, and we're going to come up with a solution to the problem. Let's get it done. This is where the original motor was mounted. So on the back of the machine, they had a welded up bracket uh, that bolts to the machine. And on top of that is this plate, probably half inch thick plate. 
And then on top of that, they had these two uh, metal brackets, bars here, whatever. Uh, notice we have some slots in here. There were some bolts that went down and bolted that in. And then there are four tapped holes and that's where the actual motor bolted straight down to. This thing was a huge motor. Uh, notice on the ends of this, uh, it kind of bends around the end and they had a set screw on the end where you could adjust these back and forth. And that was for tensioning the belt up. Uh, you could loosen up the screws in the slot here, uh, tighten these set screws up, that would move the motor back, and that would, of course, tighten the belts up. So it was a nice little setup. Uh, but the motor I'm using, again, is, is much, much smaller. You can see the size of the, just the, the four feet, that, that motor stood up probably this high, you know, it was this wide, it was a gigantic motor back here. Also, let me mention this, I didn't say this early on, but um, yes, the motor was wired for 440, that's what it was designed for. Uh, the guy previously was running it on 220 volts, when I brought it in the shop, I ran it on 220 volts, and you can run a, a 440 volt motor on 220 volts, wouldn't really recommend it. It will, it will work. Um, but when you do, you're not going to be running at the full RPMs and you're also not going to be running at the full horsepower. So you're losing a lot of speed and a lot of power in that motor uh, when you run it there. And it's generally just not good for the motor. It can make it the life a lot rougher on that motor, but it will work uh, again, but not recommended. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get basically these uh, brackets here that we had, they're going to go away. And what I have done is uh, I've just purchased one of these plates, a motor mount plate like this that has the, it's the right frame for my motor. You can see the, the four bolts, much smaller footprint. This motor's only going to stand about this high. Um, same horsepower, just modern technology. The challenge I've got though is that to properly position this to get where the belts are gonna line up, it's gonna have to kind of overhang this original plate back here. Uh, there's not any place to bolt it onto. Also, as you can see, uh, the, the four mounting poles for the, uh, the bracket that's up underneath here kind of gets in the way of uh, of this motor mount. So uh, we're gonna have to make a little bit of a modification. And, and my solution is really pretty simple. So I've got some uh, metal stock over here. It's, uh, what is it, three quarters of an inch thick, two inches wide. And I'm just gonna cut two pieces. And uh, we've got a set of holes right here that's actually gonna work out just right. Uh, we're gonna basically just bolt a, a crossbar on, on, on here where it's, well, the, it'll extend out uh, past the table here a little bit. I'm gonna have to drill and tap holes in the plate to put another one back here that will line up with that. The uh, height of this piece of metal that we're putting on here is actually taller than the uh, height of these uh, bolts here. So that will basically raise everything up just high enough that we won't have to worry about these being in, in, in a problem with the plate. And uh, the motor mount that I've got has got a adjuster built into it that will move it back and forth to tension the belts up. So I don't have to worry about designing that into the, the frame kind of like the original. So anyway, fairly simple solution, I think, uh, that should get us going. So uh, anyway, let's get in here and let's see if we can get this thing done. So I thought I'd show you guys real quickly the original motor and I have taken this thing apart uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna put it back together because it's pretty much scrap as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you can see the size of it. This thing's huge for a 10 horsepower motor. I mean, this thing is as big as a 15 or 20 horsepower modern motor, maybe even bigger. This thing is super, super heavy. Uh, there's the original nameplate on it. And let me zoom you in there and show you that where you can kind of see what I'm talking about where they had cut out the 220 volts on it. So you can see it's a 10 horsepower, uh, three phase motor, 60 cycles. You can see the 440 volts. And right here, it used to say 220, but they had scratched it out. There was your amps, 14 amps at uh, 440 volts, probably 28 amps at 220 is typically as you uh, reduce the voltage by half, you, you doubled the amps. 
Uh, again, 10 horsepower continuous rated. Uh, and you can see the patent date, patent July 4th, uh, 1916. So this is a really old motor and very likely original to it. I would love to use it. I really would. But uh, when I look at the amount of time and money it's going to cost me to, uh, to get this motor running, you know, I just have to draw the line somewhere. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this is, I'm, I'm drawing the line through this. We're not going to use this motor. One of the things that really keyed me off that there was a big problem with this motor was once I got it off the machine, I took it off and we cleaned it up, repainted it. I was really intending to use it. But when I would just turn this motor by hand, I mean, it was really, really hard to turn. And uh, that was when I decided to pull it apart and see what's going on. This is one of the journals. This is on the pulley end. And you can see how scarred up that shaft is. So we pretty much had just eaten through the, the uh, sleeve bearing that was on the inside of that thing. And um, the way that that thing is designed, it, it's not something that I would easily be able to just machine and replace, unfortunately. It's a fairly complicated sleeve bearing. And I wasn't even able to get one out. I'm sure there's a trick to it. I didn't know what it was. I'm not even going to show you that. And also, another thing that was kind of, I thought, kind of crappy about it is the pulley that was on it actually had this, this shim up in it. And uh, instead of actually being the right size to fit the shaft, uh, there were several issues going on. But ultimately, guys, to fix this thing, you know, we probably had to source new bearings, uh, which, again, would not have been easy. We'd have had to turn this shaft down, probably spray weld it, build it back up. We would have had to have it either rewound or if I got lucky, maybe they could have pulled the leads out to, to be able to run it on the right voltage. It's just it was just a basket case. It was too far gone, in my opinion. And as for the motor we're going to put on there, this is the one I'm going to use. This is also happens to be a General Electric motor, but a much newer model. I don't really know when it was made. Still an old motor. This is one that uh, I actually had acquired somewhere along the way. It was in my pile of motors. And a long time ago, I, I was going to use this motor on a restoration I was working on. And I actually took it apart. Uh, we checked it out internally. I replaced the bearings in this thing. I cleaned it up, painted it, put it back together. And as, as it turned out, I ended up, when it was all said and done, uh, not using this motor on that machine. So this thing's just been kind of sitting out there ready to go for a while. I pulled it out, checked it out. It still runs great. Uh, it's, you know, it's practically a brand new rebuilt motor or a rebuilt motor, not a brand new motor, but a rebuilt motor. And, uh, you know, just runs just fine. It's also 10 horsepower. Again, it's a much smaller uh, size altogether. The biggest uh, difference between this motor and the other one is the speed. So uh, the other one was, what, 855 RPMs. This one's 1,750. So, you know, a little over twice as fast. But to get around that, I was able to uh, do the math and uh, I've come up with a pulley size that we can put on this that's going to keep the machine running at the same RPMs. We're using a much smaller pulley. The original pulley is a little over twice the size and diameter, uh, but doing the math, uh, like I said, we were able to keep our speed within about 50 RPMs on the machine. Uh, and the machine actually tells what RPM it wants to run at. So. Again, I'm, I'm happy with that. This is what we're going to go with, and uh, I think it's going to do the job just fine. It won't be as cool and sexy looking as that old, really old motor, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm not worried about that as much as I am functionality. I want this machine to work. So I think what I'm going to do here is go ahead and get this motor up on that um, plate on the bottom, the adjustment plate because that's what we're going to be mounting to the machine. So I'm just using my engine hoist. Uh, my gantry was going to take a lot of work to get the gantry moved back here. So I'm just using my uh, engine hoist right here to kind of get this started. Let's see. How often do I need an extra set of hands in the shop? Fairly frequently. There we go. That one is on. That one is on. Lower it down a little bit more. All right. Go ahead and 
Get a couple of these nuts on here. All right, I don't want to tighten those up all the way. I just want to snug them on there. Go ahead and set this down. Get this uh, engine hoist out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead, we'll go ahead and uh, put our other screws on here, our nuts on here rather. And uh, like I said, I'll leave these loose for right now. Just snug them up because we'll have to adjust the uh, position of the motor using this nut here on the back or bolt. And uh, that will move the motor in and out to get the tension of the belt set just right. And then you'll tighten down everything and it'll just squeeze it all shut. So I got my piece of metal here. This is just some uh, stuff I found out in the scrap yard. Or I say scrap yard on my scrap pile, I guess is a better way of saying it. A little bit rusty, but we'll work that out. It'll clean up fine. Uh, I need two pieces that are 17 inches long. So we'll just use the marble saw here and cut those up. I'll go ahead and clamp that down. Yeah, let me turn on my phase converter. All right. Let's start this thing up. We'll let that saw right through. I love this marble saw. This thing is amazing. You can see how quickly that's coming across there. Cuts perfectly straight. Yeah, this is a really good addition to the shop. Those bars cleaned up pretty good. I took them over to the wire wheel and knocked that uh, rust off. So next thing I need to do is figure out where I want to drill these holes. And let's see, I have already determined I need for this to stick out two and a half inches, roughly. It's not an exact measurement, but two and a half inches past the uh, end of the table there. So I'm just going to... Put me a mark on here where that is and it looks like those holes are not in line with one another and I need to transfer them over so I think what I got I got some transfer screws that we can put in there with center punches on it and come over here and just uh, tap them down and mark those uh, spots where those holes need to line to keep everything square on the other side uh, we'll drill these holes first and then transfer those to the plate and drill those so let me go get some transfer plugs and uh, we'll get those lined up I've got my bar kind of mounted roughly where I want it to be. And I've made some marks on here to kind of get it lined up on this uh, hole. And what I want to do is I got these two existing tapped holes I want to use and transfer those over to the bar. What I've got are some transfer screws. Uh, if you've never seen these, what I'm going to do is get two of them out. These, um, are threaded to different thread pitches and they have a center punch in the very end of them. So when you put these in a threaded hole, it basically turns that threaded hole into a center punch. So there's my center punch. You got a little hex on the end. You, you can use this to install it. So I'm just going to screw that in there. And I want that center to be just above there like such. We're going to do the same thing over here on the back side. And this will transfer a center punch hole right where we need for it to be to be able to drill these out. So next step, I've got marked, I'm going to use this front one kind of as a guide. I got it marked roughly where it needs to be centered up there. Tell you what, I think that needs to come up just a touch. And I got my bar marked over here where it needs to be. Now the next thing, this is real important, it needs to be square to this pulley. Now I can look at this plate and tell it's on here crooked. 
and it's the way it is. I'm not going to fix it. I mean, this thing's been this way for over 100 years. We're just going to leave it like it is. But it's going to make this plate look like it's not square, and I need to reference against the pulley to square this thing up. Now, to do that, I've got a gigantic machinist square. This is a 24-inch machinist square, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use put the bottom on the pulley, and I can see I need to pull it in like such. Everything's lined up like it needs to be. And now I can transfer those uh, holes on there. I'm just gonna take a hammer, in this case a lead hammer. I can kind of feel that indention I made there. And we'll do the same thing down here on this end. And when I flip that over, I've got two center punch holes there. That's where my holes need to be drilled for this one. And on the other one, like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and put some holes in there and uh, we'll transfer them to the plate once we figure out where they need to go. All right, I'm going to pull my transfer plugs back out. We'll put these up and we'll go to the drill press and we'll drill these other holes. We're over here at the radial drill now. Let's go ahead and get these things drilled out. I'm gonna lower my head down first. Get down where it needs to be. It's probably good. And uh, we'll just kind of dial in here on that first hole and get it ready to drill. See, I think we got it centered up pretty good right there. I'm gonna lock everything down. We're drilling a quarter inch hole. Recommends uh, 1222 RPMs for that on my speed gauge over here. So looks like about 990 is gonna be the closest we can get. Go. And we'll just drill on down through there. There we go. The bolts on this uh, thing here, 9 16 inch, which is an odd size, but that's just what the, they were. So we're going to go 37 64, which is just one size larger than 9 16 That'll be our final uh, size here. And let's see, get my speed set for that. Looks like it'd be about 489. I'm just going to go to 350 right here. And we'll let that drill down. There we go. One side done. Um, same thing on the other side. We'll just uh, dial over there and knock that one out. I've got this uh, top one mounted on here now. It's just bolted down. Everything should be nice and square. The second one, I went ahead and drilled the holes. Uh, just laid them out using the other one as an example and got them in the center of the bar. Now what I need to do is I need to transfer the location of these holes to this plate so that I can drill and tap those. Now, these holes were one size above 916, what was that, 2764, I think. This is a 2764 transfer punch. So it is a exactly the same diameter as the hole, but it has a center punch in the center. So I can just drop that right down in there. And uh, when I tap that, it's going to put that uh, a center punch right in the center of where I want this hole to be. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And when I drill those holes now, they should be lined up just right. So you can see my two center punch holes. I'm going to start with a quarter inch pilot hole. Just be easier to drill through there, that smaller size hole and try and do the whole thing in one pass. <laughs> All 
All right, and pilot holes drilled. We'll swap out drill bits. 31 64 just under half an inch. There we go. Put a little tap and uh, fluid on there, that's some anchor lube. I'll just kind of help lubricate this and hopefully make it go a little bit easier. And we'll cut these uh, threads. Here we go. Hole number one. And there we go, number two. And let's see how we did. I think that'll do it. Very good, our mounting brackets are on here. So I've got the motor right here on the engine hoist and we're uh, bringing it in here to get it kind of where it needs to be. And we'll have to pull it out here in a minute, but I want to get it kind of positioned where I want these holes to go so that we can uh, properly mount them. Let me see here. All right. I'm just kind of eyeballing this pulley to make sure my belts are going to line up fine. Uh, we've got some adjustment where I can mount this. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I want to get as far up on there as I can. And you get a scale or something to measure off the ends of these. These should be the same length and it's pretty close to where it needs to be right now. And I need to get a transfer punch to uh, punch these holes as well. I'm just eyeballing these uh, Centers. I'm going to hit it with a punch, but I like to have a something a little bit more visible. And I got my transfer punch, and we'll just come in here and hit all these. There we go. All right, I'm gonna pull the motor off. I'm gonna go drill and tap these for half inch 13. And I think we'll be ready to put the motor back on. So uh, we gotta take it off first, so. Well guys, I think we've got this thing mounted over here and ready to go. So uh, all I got left to do is I need to wire this thing up and uh, I need to get the right belts for it. I don't have the right belts for it right now. I was waiting to get it over here so I could measure them and kind of get a good idea. Now, a um, couple of just little things to note. We've got everything pretty well lined up at square. I do have adjustment here to uh, fine adjust the position of the pulley to get them lined up just right. I've got adjustment moving in and out for me to tighten and loosen the belts up. So uh, I think we're gonna be in good shape all there. Now, one thing I'm sure some of you guys are gonna comment about is we got a three uh, pulley 
on up here, and this, this original one had five uh, grooves in it. I couldn't find anything. Uh, I couldn't find a pulley the right diameter that had more than three. So it's gonna be fine. That's gonna give us, transfer us plenty of power for uh, what I'm gonna be using this thing for. Uh, I'm not worried about that one bit. But uh, there you go. Uh, you know, it's not as pretty as the old antique motor would have been, but this uh, should get the job done. And uh, a little bit of electrical work and uh, like I said, get the right belts in here and we should be good. There is a belt cover that goes over this. I don't have it on here right now, obviously, but once we get everything uh, kind of finalized, I'll refit that on here. I should be able to use this existing belt cover. Uh, so this will all be covered up in the final, final setup. Well, there we go. When motor mounted, that's uh, been on my to-do list for a really long time. And uh, it's just had to work its way to the top, had to get up there where I needed to get it done. And that day finally came and I am happy to have that again, checked off the list. Like I said, we've still got some electrical work to do, getting it wired in, get the belts on there. But uh, you know, that's, even though there wasn't a whole lot to that, that took a good bit of time. It's just a lot of, a lot of little things that have to be done and uh, glad to have it checked off. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to continue doing some stuff. I've, I've got several things that I need to really do to this machine before it's ready to use, but before I could do anything else, I needed to get that motor going. So you're probably gonna see a few more videos uh, on us doing some fine tuning on this machine and uh, getting it ready. Like I said, I do have a job that I would like to use it for uh, coming up fairly soon. So um, it is time is finally of the essence to kind of get this thing knocked out and ready to go. With that, guys, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always appreciated. Really helps out the analytics on the channel. Uh, hit that bell icon up there to get notifications uh, when new videos are posted to the channel. And I appreciate all my viewers out there. Uh, appreciate my Patreons who support me uh, uh, financially through Patreon out here to help me be able to create more, more videos. That's all always appreciate it as well. And guys, with that, we're going to sign off. Uh, we'll talk to you guys on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.